do, folks? It is your boy Marcos. Welcome to another edition of Tide Tuesday. And this say, in this segment, I like to bring you those close games, the games that come down to the wire, that come down to a few select decisions. Whether I win or lose, it don't matter. I do. I like to win, though. I'm playing T Death Match on Hydro, and I just got stabbed to death. And I did not appreciate that. I thought I was gonna give those guys a drop. Um, now, what happened right there that I did wrong? Pretty easily. I dropped right in front of those guys, and I should have known by where the dots were. And even if they were a little bit further back, I was dropping right into the line of sight. I got a little bit eager there. I got a little bit trigger happy. I thought I could make that maybe they'd be hurt, so I come down, turn on them, kill them really quickly. No. And look at that. All of a sudden, we're down 4-12. to 12. I'm not going to say it's entirely on me because of that decision, but they probably killed two, three more people on that side over there. So I, my death right there probably led to a total of five or six deaths total. And hey, maybe they got that care package off of that. Maybe they got a UAV off of it. Whatever. I put them already in an advantageous situation. And then the game mode like team deathmatch, you don't want to help your the other team out because it's, it's just not enough time to catch up right there. Those 75 kills come quick, and you need to make as many good decisions as you can to keep your team in this ball game. And that's the thing that's very interesting about Call of Duty when you're playing through this. Every life. And I mean, search kind of redefines this till it takes it to a whole nother level that every life means a lot. Because, hell, if you die in search, you're kind of dead. But even in the game modes like Team Deathmatch, Kill Confirm, I like to play a Domination, a Demo, or when I bring you Hardpoint, whatever game mode I, I, I put up right there. Your life influences so many other factors that you don't even know. It's kind of like real life, you know. One decision that to you might seem simple or might seem pointless could mean the game at any point in the game there's any ramification that you do whether you kill this guy whether you don't kill this guy whether you get this buzz kill i don't know what this guy was doing behind the forklift i don't know if he just had to take a piss and decided to hide or somewhere but i'm sorry bro if you give me a free kill i will take it i'm trying to emp that guardian right there hits the barrel and i miss it and i'm like damn it that sucks and try to get my man with the c4 didn't get him and instead of stepping up over there i was hurt he had the advantage pulled back i'm like nah and then this guy pushed the guardian up a little bit closer Gonna take that out. Thank you for the points for the UAV. So every decision really counts. And it really matters what you do. And it matters not only towards your life and towards your kill streak, but it matters towards the person that you're killing, whether you get them on a bus kill, or whether you give them a VSAT. Uh, it matters to your teammates. Whether, you know, if you could have killed that guy, you might have stopped him from getting three or four more guys. Maybe he got a little bit of confidence after he killed you. Maybe he killed you and then your other teammate ran out foolishly, kind of like I did over there at the beginning. And then you die. Everything has to be uh, thought about when making every decision. That's why every decision you make has got to be a good one. Now, it's tough. It's tough, you know. It's a game after all, you know. It's not like real life. This is a real war. Real lives aren't at stake here. But if you're trying to win, if you're trying to be competitive, if you're trying to get those big win streaks going, then I heard this guy right here. I had to wait for him. I'm like, hold on, my man. I just can't allow you to come up over here and murder me like this. I don't appreciate that. And I'm sneaking out over here. Let me tell you my class setup also. Type 25 suppressed. You know, Hydro is really a map that I still haven't quite nailed what to do on it exactly. For the longest, I ran a Peacekeeper on it. And I still do. A lot of times. And I'm cool with it. But I don't know. I, you know, I'm running the Type 25 suppressed now. I've run LMGs on it too. And I've had mixed success with all of the weaponry. Uh, some good, some bad. I don't know. It's it's an interesting map. I it's not necessarily my a great map by any means. It's not necessarily a favorite map of mine, but it's I don't really hate it either. I think a lot of people just dislike Hydro. I don't really have any beef with it personally. I just don't. It's I'm kind of indifferent to it. You know, I kind of just ah Hydro. All right, whatever. Bang out six seven minutes right here. Sneak up over behind here. This guy is just he is not playing. Let me get that kill for that uh with that combat knife thank you very much uh what i need i need to do to get a goal i need to kill somebody pick up his gun and then shoot him with it uh, i need to do that like two or three times and that's a little bit it's a little bit difficult because you kind of have to find the guy again that's the most difficult part aside for the fact that you actually knife him and pray he has like a real gun and not some crazy you know like svu or uh i don't know to five seven there we go. Somebody managed to break through for the V-set. And we're still down right here, but we managed to claw back up. You know, we were ready early on. We pointed out that we were down by 10, 12 uh, kills. But we managed to come back over here. And this is one of my biggest weaknesses in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. It is climbing up that wall right there. I don't know what it is about that wall, but I just can't do it. 
uh, I just can't do it. So this guy right here, we're going to give him the C4. And then we look over here into the spawn. I see one. I'm like, okay. I see two. All right. Let me reload. And let's get this third guy right here. Probably a sniper looking out. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now we're waiting on this arrow right here. See what's going to happen. And boom. All of a sudden, we took the lead right here. Obviously, the V-set just makes everything so much easier. And then that power of the last bullet right there on that man. I risked it. I got it. And then we managed to kill this guy right here. We got the lightning strike. I'm thinking about calling it right over here on the spot. I'm like, you know what? I got these guys over here in the spot. I've been doing some serious damage. I thought that guy was already up there. Unfortunately, he had to step up the whole way. I'm thinking whether I should go up or I should stay down here. So I managed to get him, make the decision for me. All right, now we're going to lightning strike the spawn. Lightning strikes are great on this map as well, uh, especially when they all spawn on one side. It really likes to flip the spawns. Uh, it's one thing I enjoy about Hydra. Spawns, I feel, are a little bit more controlled than a lot of maps. Get the one two punch right there on the turn. Thank you. And then we'll throw the V set. Feel a little more control than in other maps. Uh, they either spawn on, on Alpha side or on Charlie's side. And that is kind of it. So he managed to come back here, here. Power of the V sets, power of the lightning strikes. Managed to go 31 and 7. Not bad at all. Pretty good game right here. Solid uh, comeback from behind. Uh, w. If you get one thing out of this video, man, is that every decision, no matter how small it counts, it could be an EMP grenade, it could be a C4, it could be a flash. It all matters. Have a great Tuesday.